By far the easiest way to handle a runtime error is simply to have your code ignore it. While this simple approach won't be appropriate in every case, it is a good way to introduce the concept of runtime errors and the use of the on error statement. Let's start by opening the file that I've downloaded and extracted, and if requested, let's choose to enable any content. The worksheet contains a number of shapes that you can click on to move the active cell. So you'll see if you click on the arrows, you move around between different cells on the sheet. But what happens if we attempt to move past the boundaries of the worksheet? What we want to do in this section of the lesson is explain how to stop a user from seeing an error message if the code we're trying to execute causes an error. Runtime errors are problems that occur when your code attempts to perform an instruction, but for some reason it can't. A runtime error is easy to spot as you'll be presented with a dialog box when it occurs. You can easily generate a runtime error in this example by selecting a cell that is near the edge of the worksheet and then attempting to click one of the buttons that will move past the edge of the worksheet. If I click on the button that points to the top left hand corner, I'll be presented with a runtime error dialog box. While the dialog box provides some basic information about what's gone wrong, the most useful part of it is the debug button. If I click debug, it will open the Visual Basic Editor automatically and show me which line of code has caused the error to occur. Once you've identified the instruction that's causing the error, you can reset the procedure simply by clicking the blue square button on the toolbar at the top, so I can click reset to stop the code from trying to run. To prevent the error message appearing to the end user, we can add an on error statement which instructs the procedure to ignore any runtime errors generated by the instruction. Click just before the only instruction in the procedure and begin a new statement that begins with the two words on error. The on error statement instructs the procedure what to do in the event that a runtime error is caused by any subsequent instructions in the procedure. In this example, the subroutine contains only one other instruction. And if that instruction fails, it must mean that we can't move to the cell that we've indicated. If that's the case, we simply want the procedure to ignore the instruction and continue running at the next available line of code. And we can achieve this by adding resume next after the on error statement. Resume next tells the code to ignore the instruction which caused the error and proceed as though nothing had ever gone wrong. So if we return to Excel to test this code now, if we're already in the top left hand corner and we assume we try to move to the top left again, this time we won't see a runtime error message occur. We should just check that the code works when a runtime error isn't generated. So if we move down a couple of cells or down and to the right a couple of cells, when we click the up and left arrow again, the code will work when no runtime error is generated, but it also won't display a runtime error message when we can't move past that cell on the worksheet.